Hello, everyone. This is Dr. Bonnie Hennig Trestman, also known as Dr. Bonnie. Today, I'm going to present to you a talk on the decision making process for people who are at risk. My conflicts of interest include I'm the HD Reach Special Program Director and co creator of the At Risk Decision Making Path and Genetic Testing Path. I'm also on the board of directors for HDO, the Huntington's Disease Youth Organization, as the co chair of the research committee. In addition, I'm the director of the Carilion Clinic Huntington's Disease Program in Roanoke, Virginia. Many people at risk for HD describe the difficulty they face trying to decide to test or not to test. This presentation will provide an overview of the genetic testing process, including suggestions to consider prior to testing, pretest counseling, the testing process, and steps post-testing. The HD Reach at risk decision path and genetic testing path will be discussed as an example of one testing protocol. Many times, people who are at risk think about testing for months and years. There are financial, emotional, and social issues that impact this decision. So, a good first step can be to try to figure out what motivates you. You can ask yourself, why now? What is it about now that makes me want to know the result? Another good step is to do a pro con analysis. This analysis was de developed by Dr. Mary Edmondson and can be helpful to people who are having trouble trying to decide to test. On this slide, you will see the pro-con analysis. Each section should be thought out and filled in completely. Once completed, people may find clarity to help guide their decision. Another important factor to consider prior to testing is to look into eligibility for benefits. The benefits that I'm referring to include health and dental insurance, life insurance, short and long-term disability, and long-term care insurance. Now, there is no set rule that says a person must obtain these benefits prior to testing, but it is important to remember that if you test positive for HD, you may no longer be available for some types of these benefits. So it's always a good idea to talk to a professional about how having these benefits can help you in the future. Other pretest considerations include asking yourself about your support system. Identifying people who you can trust to be with you through this journey is really important. It's also important to think about how you should involve your support system. Many times people have said to me that they will decide later after testing who and when they should tell that they were tested. That's a huge burden to carry and it takes away the control from others who might want to help you. Instead of trying to figure out after testing when the right time is to tell people, a better choice is to talk to people before you're tested. That way you can let people know that you're considering being tested and asking them how they wanna be involved. Some people might tell you that they don't wanna know the results, but other, others might tell you that they really wanna be part of your journey. I know far too many people who have carried the burden of a test result with them for years, only to find out later on that their loved ones would have wanted to know when they were being tested and the results. As one young woman said, to assume you'll be a burden on others is a mistake because nobody can go through life alone. Another consideration is to find out if you can privately pay for your HD testing. Remember, if an insurance company pays for testing, then they have access to that information. And if your employer pays for your insurance, they may, then they also might have access to some of that information. And while the Genetic Information Non-Discriminatory Act, or GINA, of 2008 was designed to protect people against genetic discrimination, it's not foolproof. Also, GINA does not apply to life insurance, disability insurance, or long-term care insurance. By pri privately paying for testing, you're ensured that only you have access to the fact that you were tested and to the results, unless you provide written consent otherwise. You can also ask the testing facility if anonymous testing is offered. Anonymous testing is another great way to ensure that results are kept confidential. Although the testing program might require that the chart is created with your real information, with anonymous testing, the blood work might be drawn and sent to a lab for processing under a pseudonym or a fake name. When it comes to the testing process, people may say, I've lived with HD all my life. I just want to have the blood test. This is understandable, but there are truly reasons for counseling prior to testing. 
First, it is really important to know that only true genetic counseling can be done by a geneticist or a genetic counselor. However, in many testing sites, patients or clients may instead be seen by other professionals for pretest counseling. This counseling may be done by other people such as social workers, psychologists, or nurses. So it can be helpful to ask your testing site who exactly you'll be meeting during your testing process. So let's go back to the reasons why pre-testing counseling is important. Even though many people who want to be tested grow up in families where there's generations of Huntington's disease, it's important to know that you have the correct information about HD. And it's, it's important to correct any misinformation you might have. The pre-test counseling will review inheritance, the symptoms of HD, and options such as if the testing is predictive testing, meaning that the person doesn't show any signs of HD, or if the test will be used to confirm a diagnosis for symptoms the person is already showing. Only 10 to 25% of people who are at risk decide to be tested. So having a healthcare team who can give you information to protect yourself, make sure that you have the right information and will walk you through this process can make it a lot less stressful. Other similarities across sites include the pretest counseling, sometimes known as the biopsychosocial assessment where the counselor will ask about personal and family medical history, might ask how the person normally copes in a difficult situation, and asks who the person's support systems are. Once the pre-test counseling is complete, the team will decide if it's a good time for the person to be tested. This means that if there is a high risk for that person to be tested, they might first be referred to a counselor for support before proceeding with the testing process. If the person is clear for testing, they will have their blood drawn. Usually the site will set up the next appointment for the results at the blood draw. They will also ask the person to bring at least one support person with them for the, the result meeting. Regardless of the results, many testing sites will wanna follow up with the person who was tested to see how they were coping. Even if a test result is negative, meaning that the person does not have the gene for HD, there can be a lot of emotions such as survivor's guilt that the person may experience. The follow-up will not only check in with the person, but help them to know that additional assistance is available. When talking about results, it's helpful to understand the terms that it will be used. Some testing centers might just say that you're positive, negative, or in the gray area, which is something that we're gonna discuss. Other facilities might offer you the test results on a piece of paper. That piece of paper will include, include two numbers for something called the CAG or CAG repeat. CAG repeats are genes, which are individual instructions found in our DNA. DNA is our blueprint, which designs who we are and what we look like. C, A, and G are the first letters of the DNA that gives instructions for the cells to make a protein called Huntington. Everyone has two copies of this gene. A gene is also called an allele. One copy comes from our biological mother, and one copy comes from our biological father. For people who have HD, they have one normal copy, which produces the Huntington protein, and a, one copy called a mutation, which produces a protein that's toxic to the cell. That unfortunately causes the symptoms of HD. So when the blood is tested, the laboratory is counting up how many times C, A, and G are repeated. The test results come back with many different outcomes. First, and in most cases, there'll be one normal gene from the parent who doesn't have HD. Those results will be a number less than 27, meaning that the gene produces exactly the type of protein it is supposed to. The other gene can have one of four outcomes. If the number is less than 27, then the person will not develop symptoms of HD. If the results are higher than 39, then the person, if they live long enough and don't die from other illness or an accident beforehand, will eventually show signs of Huntington's disease. Then there is this gap. It's called the gray area, which is between 27 and 39 CAG repeats. The gray area is also broken down into two sections. The first is when the results are 29 to 35 CAG repeats. This is called the intermediate range. It means that the person tested most likely won't show any signs of Huntington's disease. However, if they have children, this gene isn't very stable and can expand in the genes of the next generation. If the results are 36 to 39 CAG repeats, this is called the intermediate range. 
the person tested may show signs of Huntington's disease, but usually later in life. And again, since this gene is unstable, there's a chance that the gene can expand to future generations. When thinking about testing, it's important for people to know that they can decide to opt out and stop testing at any time up to when they receive the results. The reason for this is that once a person is given the results, we can't take that information back. So if they aren't sure that they want to know the results, they can wait. It's also important to remember that these genes have been your genes since you've been conceived. So if you have tested positive or, but are asymptomatic, meaning that you don't have symptoms, then that doesn't mean that you have Huntington's disease. It means that you have the gene that causes symptoms of Huntington's disease later in the future. That brings us to post-testing. First of all, know for some people, it could take a year or more for the reality of the results to sink in. This is normal, but it could be very helpful to talk to a healthcare professional about the feelings that you're having about your results. So you can talk to someone anytime after you find out your results. No matter the results, positive, negative, or in the gray area, the testing site should do a follow-up visit or at least a call. Again, it can take up to a year or many years for the test results to finally sink in. At the result visit or the follow-up call, options can be provided to the person tested. First, if positive or in the gray area, a referral can be made to a healthcare team knowledgeable about HD. At that first visit, the healthcare team can complete an assessment specifically designed for people with a gene for HD. This assessment is called a UHGRS, a Unified Huntington's Disease Rating Scale, which covers all three types of the symptoms of HD. Next, the healthcare team can refer the person and sometimes even the family member for research trials. Some testing sites can offer as well baseline neuropsychological or cognitive tests to determine how you're thinking, planning, and organizing. It can be helpful to have a baseline test to compare future cognitive test results. And sites can offer or make referrals to counselors to help people and their families cope with the testing results. Some resources to find out more about HD, genetic testing, research, conferences, advocacy, and support are listed here. Now I'm gonna to present to you one testing model. At HD Reach, we wanted to offer something different. We know that 70% of people who are either at risk or have symptoms of HD don't see a healthcare provider. We wanted to change the stigma of going to a medical office or hospital for testing. So by bringing together people with expertise and experience, we came up with a program which is not part of a medical facility and is confidential. Results are never included in your medical record unless you provide written consent to do so. HD Reach does not partner with insurance companies. These programs are private pay only. The staff who provide the services are knowledgeable and experienced in working with people who are at risk. And one of the best features is that many of the visits are accessible to more people because we use teletherapy or online video counseling. We created two different paths. The first path is the at-risk decision-making path, which includes virtual visits with a social worker and one final visit with a psychiatrist. The second path is the genetic testing path, which includes the blood test, a result visit, and a telephone follow-up visit. So how does it work? Once a person contacts the HD Reach office, they're connected to the client navigator. That person will go over important pre-test issues such as benefits, documentation, and information about the HIPAA-compliant teletherapy service that we use. Once the person feels that they're ready to proceed and returns the signed documents to the HD Reach office, a social worker is assigned to them. The social worker will meet with the person online to complete the biopsychosocial assessment and go over questions and concerns the person might have. The social work visits may also include a review of decision-making tools, coping tools, and how to build resiliency. Once the social work visits are complete, a referral will be made to a psychiatrist who will review the notes from the social worker and will go over any questions that the person who is being tested or the social, or the social worker has. The psychiatrist then will determine if the person is currently appropriate to continue testing for the HD gene, or if they should be referred to a mental health consultant for further evaluation. If the person approved for genetic testing wishes to proceed with HD reach, they will be met by a phlebotomist 
who will draw their blood. Most of the time that visit will take place at the HD Reach main office. To ensure confidentiality, a pseudonym or fake name will be used for the blood test. If the person tested ever wants to release the results of the blood test to a provider, HD Reach will provide documentation linking the pseudonym to the real name. An appointment for the results will be made at the blood draw visit. Usually the visit result is scheduled for one month after the blood is drawn. Once again, this path is private pay, so insurance companies or employers will not have access unless the person provides written consent to release this information. HD Reach recommends a support person attend the result visit along with the person being tested. At that visit, the person will be met by their social worker and potentially another staff member, such as the client navigator or a psychiatrist. Results will be given in hard copy as well as verbally, and the HD Reach staff will ensure that the person being tested understands what their results mean. If needed, the HD Reach staff will provide a list of referrals to local healthcare providers who specialize in HD. In all honesty, usually people just need to sit with the results for a while before they take next steps. The HD Reach staff will be available to sit with you for as long as you need. In one month after your result visit, you'll be contacted by a member of the HD Reach team for follow-up. This is so that we can reach out for support, to find out if you need additional referrals, and give you a chance to discuss your experience with the at-risk decision-making path and the genetic testing path. The feedback you give is important so that we can make sure we're meeting the needs of other people who are thinking about testing after you. Currently, HD Reach is offering the at-risk decision-making path and the genetic testing path in North Carolina, South Carolina, and in Virginia. Today, I provided you with a lot of information and I appreciate your time. But if you have any questions or concerns about anything in this presentation, please contact HD Reach at 919-803-8128. Thank you and I hope you found this presentation helpful.